Hi, and welcome to this presentation on Selenic Authority. Let's get going here. All right, so if you have splenic authority, then you are either a projector or a manifester. And I want to reiterate for you that the most important thing is that you follow your aura types strategy. So if you're a projector, that means that you wait for an invitation and you, yeah, you're looking to be recognized and then looking for that um, place or moment where there's really an invitation for you to share who you are and what you do. Then once that invitation comes, then you're looking at, okay, now I'm using, you know, my authority to discern if this is the right invitation for me or not. As a manifester, you know, you're moving, your life, you're this ball of energy that's moving through the world. And I, I kind of think of a manifester a little bit like a bowling ball, but it's probably not the best metaphor. But you're looking to inform, and your authority, your splenic authority can help guide, you know, your movement through the world. So for you, you know, your strategy and authority are kind of more... Um, interwoven that you know your splenic awareness can help guide you as you move forward so if you have splenic authority that's not it's the third most common but it's relatively uncommon uh, it's nine percent of the planet that has splenic authority so if you have splenic authority, what that means is that you'll have this center defined, the spleen in your chart, and that both the sacral and the solar plexus, which is over here, it's just kind of cut off in this photo on the right, are both going to be undefined. So it works like it's almost, you know, these ones would trump the spleen if they were defined. So if those both those centers are undefined and the spleen is defined, then you have splenic authority. Now we're just gonna start off by talking generally about the splenic center and what it is, the spleen. So the, the spleen really has to do with survival and well-being. So it has to do with keeping you alive and it's instinctual. It's this instinctual, almost primal awareness that's designed to keep you physically intact and alive on this planet. It works through the lymphatic system. So the, even though it's the spleen, it actually um, carries throughout the body through the, lymph, the lymphatic system. And it can speak as intuition. We're going to get that to that um, as we go here. The spleen is the oldest awareness center. So there's three. There are three awareness centers: um, the Ajna and the Solar Plexus, or the other two. And these uh, of these three centers, the spleen is the oldest one. That's this primal awareness it's a it's an awareness of well-being or not survival or not the spleen has ears all over the body so that um i've also heard it described like almost more like a cat sense like that there's like a smell or a taste or it can be a you know ears um So, you know, if you have splenic awareness, just notice how this subtle body almost speaks to you. I've also been heard it described as almost like having this light body throughout the body that's 
that gets lit up when something's healthy for you, or it can be, um, it could be a voice that speaks. So, you know, because it's the lymphatic system, you know, I would, I, if I had splenic authority, I would tend to want to research more about the lymphatic system and learn about like how it works and, you know, how you can start to understand um, how that system would actually speak to you. All right. So people that have defined spleens tend to have relatively hardy immune systems and hardy health because this, you know, this the, the spleen is defined, so it's handling, you know, well-being and survival consistently. It's always active. And the the spleen actually has to do with fear in a way, because it's our, it's having a healthy sense of fear that keeps us alive and well. So, you know, someone with a defined spleen, you know, look at that cliff and be like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna jump off that cliff. That doesn't, that doesn't seem like a good idea to me. They tend to have a healthy sense of fear and that's good for, for survival. Um, but they can in a way be too unaware of their, their own health. Um, and well-being because it's kind of like taken for granted that this, this spleen is handling it. People with a defined spleen and open solar plexus are in the moment people. They're, they are really in the now. And it is an, it's a center that is fast. So, you know, here we have this person, you know, like in the air with their skateboard mid rotation. Um, this is a very splenic thing because it's primal, it's instinctual. There's not really any thinking here. There's not, there's not a decision about what to do with the feet and where I should look with my eyes, like the body is just instinctually doing what's good for the being, that, the health of the being. And that's very much how this, this center works. It's pre-thought, it is um, very fast. So again, we're still just talking about the defined spleen in general, not splenic authority. Um, so someone that has a defined spleen, when they're in the healthy expression, they're tuned in to this instinctual awareness and they're really aware of it. It's, it can be very subtle. So learning to trust that is, is a huge part of having splenic authority. People that have a defined spleen, they are naturally emanating a sense of well-being because they have a consistent access to well-being. So they're, they're just kind of putting that out there. Really, this is the crux, the unhealthy um, cues here. Unhealthy is ignores instincts in the moment and lets the mind or other people's emotion overwhelm their instincts. This is huge because the, the splenic instincts are not going to necessarily be all that loud. They could be a really subtle feeling, a subtle lighting up or a subtle sense of illness. Um, if something's not right for you, someone's not right for you. So that could easily be overridden by, let's say, you know, someone else's enthusiasm for a decision. They're like, you know, someone with emotional definition comes in and they're super excited and you as a splenic being are taking in that excitement and amplifying it you know so you're riding on that Ooh, yeah this could be really exciting um but th those aren't your emotions that's that person is conditioning you in that moment so e very easy to override the cues that you get from your splenic authority when you're in the presence of someone else's emotions. 
very easy to override with your own mind. Your mind telling you, oh, well, you know, this would be a really good idea. I think this would really advance the business or grow the business, blah, 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 whatever it's telling you. All right. The trick with this authority is that you, it, it's intuitive, so it's not the kind of intuition that's like, um, you know, I, a lot of uh, the people that I tend to work with, uh, you know, are pretty developed in their intuition, but they might have developed an intuition that's like guidance that comes through their head and ajna. Um, that's not the kind of intuition we're talking about here. Um, the kind of in Intuition we're talking about here is instinctual. It's in the moment and it has to do with survival or well-being. So um, there's a difference. It's not like my guides told me that blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, my body lit up or my body lit like, ugh. like I had um, an instinctual intuitive hit in response to that invitation, for example. The, the, the difficult thing about having this authority is that it, you know, intuition is not in your control. It's not like you can, with this authority, you know, ask it a question. It's like, you know, is this person good for me? It doesn't work that way. It's, it's intuition that's either there or it's not. It's, it comes when it comes, and when it's not there, it's not there. So you could be in the way, in, in the dark, about <laughs> what's right for you. Um, an example of that is my teacher, John. He has splenic authority, and I invited him to come as a guest lecturer to one of my events. And... You know, he, so I, he was a projector with splenic authority. So here I was, I was giving him an invitation. So, you know, following his aura strategy, that was correct. He got an invitation. When it come, came to actually making the decision, he wasn't getting any intuitive hits about it at all, one way or, or another. So he never got like a, like a no or a yes. Um, it was just sort of, unclear. And so um, in that case, we ended up waiting and eventually um, decided not to do it. And I, I don't remember if he ever got a hit about it, but, um, you know, he tends to say in, you know, his life, he will kind of follow his authority. And unless something gets like a, a no, he'll tend to go along with the flow of what invitations come to him unless he gets the sense of, oh, like if he gets a hit that it's not right, then he doesn't do it. But, you know, most of the time he's not getting a hit. He's not getting a, a yes or a no. He's not getting a sense that something's good for him or not. So he's just kind of flowing with what, what life is doing. And then, um, and then there's cases where, you know, the, the, the spleen can just speak to you. It's like, especially in situations like driving or anything where your you know, survival is at stake, where it'll just pull the car over and you won't understand why, but then you, you know, witness a, an accident happen right in front of you kind of thing. So there's, you know, examples of that kind of thing happening for people with splenic authority. One thing I like about this slide is that it is in nature and I, you know, I get the sense that people with splenic authority, they do have like, uh, or even with a defined spleen, like 
this potential to really connect with nature in a primal way where they can be very attuned to themselves and their environment, um, but not when they're in the, in the mind. So here we have this person that's just completely missing what's happening because they're so focused on what they want to focus on. And that's what the mind does. It focuses on what it wants and it um, excludes <laughs> what's actually happening. <laughs> So your practice having splenic authority is to be very in tune with yourself and the subtle cues from your body. <laughs> so not following strategy and authority of the mind looks out and the subtle physical signals of the spleen are not felt or heard. So for the manifester, this is not initiating from the mind. So the, the difficult thing about that with manifest is manifestors are good at initiating from the mind you know usually they get what they want even if they've just initiated from the mind but getting what you want is not the same thing as living in peace so if you're a manifester you're really here to be an uh, I love the words agent of the program. It's like you are here to, on behalf of life, to do your thing and to move through the world in a way that impacts everyone. Um, if you're simply moving from your mind and what you think you want, you're not really acting on behalf of life itself. You're acting on behalf of your own you know, selfish wants and needs of your ego or your mind. So, you, you won't be meeting the same um, non-resistant experience that you could be meeting if you were moving in life as you're really meant to. So, you know, your cue of whether or not you're on track with following your authority is, um, is my experience overall one of peace? Or is the quality of my experience more one of anger? And the more that you are, you know, waiting also, even though you're a manifester, you do need to, you know, be attuned to the cues inside of you to help inform about like, where do you move next? Um, and it's in the moment, it's, it's uh, watching your body go somewhere, watching your body move as it moves. So as a manifester, learning to discern the difference between like, what is just your instinctual um, movement and what is it that your mind thinks that you should be doing? Um, and then from there, informing of others about how you're moving. Love to hear your reports from, from the field as you experiment with this. I, I imagine that the more tuned in a manifester or a projector with splenic authority is to their body and its subtle cues about well-being or not, you know, what people are good for it or not, what places are good for it or not. Um, and what it's just instinctually doing that this could create really amazing health, you know, a healthy being. It's not the mental story you're here to listen to, it's the body. So this might be a different way than you're used to living. And I encourage you to really experiment with it. Try it out. 
learn what you learn and see how your the quality of your life experience changes when you navigate your daily decisions this way according to the subtle cues from your body Love that word, biofeedback. Makes decisions based on their biofeedback in the moment. Yeah, the mind, you know, the mind doesn't like not being in control. So the mind is gonna keep going on with it's this and that, like, oh, well, what about blah, 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 and what about that, 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 and none, 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 none. But coming back to the body and your, you know, cues and, Learning to have that be your home place, your place that you always come back to. You know, with with splenic authority, on like the because the spleen really has to do with health or not, not listening to your authority is bad for your health. <laughs> it's like the, the decisions that are good for you are going to be good for your health. And the decisions that are not good for you that you go ahead with anyway are bad for your health. So, you know, <laughs> keep that in mind. I think you'll probably find that there's like an actual real life consequence to not listening to your authority. Hmm. I like this last point here, uncomfortable with the receptivity of being splenic. They're constantly trying to make things happen. So again, this, this authority is also a, a, a place of surrender where you don't necessarily always get the cues when you want the cues. And so you might not always know what's happening, but you know what's in the now. So just staying in the now is so awesome and i i want to also reiterate the the difficulty of not letting other people's emotions sway your decision making i think that one practice alone for anyone who's who's splenic takes a while to learn you know takes some practice and and learning how to handle those situations where people are emotional is tricky. So giving yourself the space and time away from people who are emotional, you know, if you're in a situation where someone's putting you under pressure to make a decision, the first thing you do is give yourself some space and honor yourself. Learning to self-respect is a, is a big part of this and letting go of that um, conditioning. And, you know, emotionally defined people, they don't realize that they're doing what they're doing. They don't realize the impact that they have with their, with their emotions and how they influence others. So none of this is personal, but your job is to become almost a warrior in how you honor yourself and making your decisions in a way that are that's healthy for you my friend i wish you all the best with this um, as you go out and try it so i would love to hear what you discover about splenic authority i always love more stories end up helping other people learn how to follow their splenic authority so all the best <laughs>